you know what I'm saying? We're doing the things that the church normally wants to be doing as prescribed by the scriptures. God has not yet been revealed to you. I mean it. When you have an encounter with God and He reveals Himself to you, you cannot do the church. You can't. You can't do a prayer. See, when I see boys and girls moving around, I put it that way, baby Christians, you need to beg them. I will pray. No, I don't feel me as to pray. You are still a baby. When God is revealed to you and you understand who truly he is, you are stepped up. You are fired. The petty baby duty. You are strong in the Lord always. Mysteries cannot be explained. They have to be revealed. There is the mystery about God. Understanding the, the mystery of God <laughs> means that you need revelation from God. Yet it is now. All revelation, or rather, revelation is the function of what? Faith in God. Say revelation. When something is unveiled to you and explained to you, it's a function of what? Your faith in God. This is why Hebrews 11 I believe says, He who comes to him must press off or believe. What is belief? It means to have faith in something before it is revealed. Hallelujah. Power of mystery. Look at that on the board. This will bless you. Check this out with me. Psalms 100, uh, no, no, Matthew 18, verse 9 says, This is Jesus talking to them. <laughs> the knowledge of the secrets secret of the kingdom, of, okay, of the kingdom, let me check that this way, of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Anyone born again has in them the spirit of God, I can understand spiritual realities. It says, a man without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God. That's what Corinthians 2 for. Now you see that? For they are what? Foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. This is why you cannot worship God without the spirit of God in you. So when some people say that, how can you believe in God you are not seeing? It is their business to go and find out. <laughs> you have no responsibility whatsoever to attempt to explain to people who God really is when they choose not to believe in a God they can't see. It's their business to believe first and then they cannot conclude that God doesn't exist. Come on now, do you understand that? By the way, atheism, anyone who calls himself an atheist actually knows that it's God. Just that they don't believe that he's there. It's their business. Praise God. If you don't have the spirit of God in you, you can't understand spiritual things. They are spiritually understood. They are discerned spiritually. 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 That's why John 4 24 says, God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise God. Do you follow? So, when people say, How is it that God can become Jesus and live on earth and save man? How can a better conceive? They don't understand it. If they are of the kingdom and the spirit of God is in them. It will make sense. Hallelujah. Give God a clap of it. Come on. Give God a clap of it. These are an exceptional privilege for you, for you to be here. Do you know why people are moving out there, going to nightclubs and going to other people and rely on other people and their wisdom? They are not seeing God yet. God has not been revealed to them. This is why you when you are born again, you need to be filled with the spirit of God. Without which everything spiritual will do looks like foolishness to you. Have you seen people who come to church? I remember watching a documentary, a real life event. A man of God had an ado event, and a man came there dressed in a nice suit just to look at the laughing and mocking. That was not real. Guess what? Fire literally caught him up. Literally, physically. Fire burned his coat from the back right up, right to the waistcoat. Physically, we dare to make a mockery of the move of God. <laughs> Let's look at man's session of God. God created man, do you agree? Yes. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let us make man in our image. The word man, say man. Man, man there simply means a species, a special species of humans. In fact, they call it a species of human beings. No discrimination of red, black, African American, white, or green, or yellow, or whatever color. So when someone thinks it's more superior because it's highly like complex or natural, we are all man. Say we are all man. We are all man. Okay. Man needs God to survive. Hey, wait a minute. If a baby is delivered out of breast milk, can that baby be sustained? Come on now, can a baby be sustained out of breast milk? Even if you are made artificial milk, it has the same composition of breast milk. Think about it. The inspiration is on breast milk. What's the principle? 
a God created man, what does man need for sustenance? Come and say it with conviction. What does man need for sustenance? God, brilliant. Good spirit. Praise God. Man needs God for all things. And God will not need man for all things at all. He is God by himself. Uh, now, listen to this. <laughs> Every human being right here, right? Like doing this little children sitting right here. And my beautiful daughter, Diva Smith, I wonder whether she's hearing me. When they grow up to the age of listening, they want to make meaning out of life. By the way, Madam Dave, very soon she'll be asking questions. I remember I used to ask very funny questions to my mother. So, how does a woman become pregnant? I keep asking this. It's like the baby will come into the room, God will put the baby. I say, So, God just comes and put the baby like that. They say, Yeah. And at the end of the I mean, I will see a purple They say, That's a purple I say, Why is it a purple It's crazy. I want to make meaning. I said, Someone has to be here. Someone doesn't have to. meaning. What was I going to do? What should I be doing in life? Meaning. Man is always looking for me. Why am I saying this? Next thing, <laughs> the bankruptcy, the spiritual bankruptcy, man has can only be filled by God. Do you know why people go to charmers, enchanters, satanic priests to get talisman? What they call liar and vision. So they think that's lying to you. Amen. They are void. I have a solution for you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Jesus came on earth and he put all human beings into one category. Whether you're a doctor, a pharmacist, an engineer, hairdresser, a teacher, a mechanic, whoever you are, all of us, according to Jesus, we have one problem. Say poverty in the spirit. Say poverty in the spirit. And when man wants to feel that poverty in the spirit and cannot get the right feeling ingredient, he invents a religion to try to cover up. So he said, bless I pour the spirit for you. What you need to satisfy the poverty of the spirit is the kingdom of God. That's what you're looking for. And the kingdom comes with power. Man therefore needs power. He's looking for power every day. And man wants to submit to a higher power all the time. You are built with it. And so that's why man is looking for God. That should be no being. Praise God. Now, you see, Foolishness is man denying the existence of God. Is that a doubt? Of course not. Now, when man cannot find God, what does he do? <laughs> when man cannot find God, what does he do? This is why you go to India, they have, for example, in Hinduism, millions of gods. Now, there is another founder of a religion, a major religion in the world. You know, Confucius, Confucianism, it's religion based on, you know, this philosophy, this philosophical idea of whatever God, it's a, it's, a, it's a Chinese. Come to Islam, it's an invention of man. All those religious movements, you know, they are men's inventions. Jesus knew it so much, that's why he never started a religion. He came with the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is never in a religion. Religion has to do with a set of beliefs. Rituals that men are to. Rituals that are <laughs> beliefs that automatically influence rituals designed by men. But the kingdom is authentic, it comes from God Himself. That's why the Bible is too important and unique. It is written by inspired men. It is written, of course, it's the breath of the Holy Spirit. And God caused men, he inspired men to write it. So it's the very living word of God. It's more than any other book you can write in the whole world. Scientists take inspiration from the scriptures. Praise God. So behind idol worshiping, behind loving, what about someone is worshiping money, worshiping their girlfriend, their boyfriend, worshiping whoever, behind all forms of idolatry is man searching for God that he has not yet found. That's why when some people have genuine repentance and they see God, they really regret ever worshiping other God. Praise God. Check this. The foundation for faith, for solid faith, is knowing the source of life. Think about it. This is why people get threatened and you, children of God, citizens of God's kingdom. They get threatened and you, they don't seem to understand why you have peace when others are threatened and harassed. That's because you know the source of life, God Himself. And if God be for you, and if God be for you, and if God be for you, it is only they that know their God that shall be strong and do exploits. Foundation for solid faith and distinction. Praise God. Let's now define God. Can we define God? I reference Chronicles 29, verse 11 to 13 to you. 
Your soul, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Who owns all things in heaven and earth? Okay. So all of us are managers. We only have access to God's resources, including the money in the bank account. My book on tithing will be addressed. So it's written from a kingdom perspective, not religion. So when God is asking for his property, I will deny with you. You qualify yourself as a bad manager and you deserve not to have it again. That's a hard one, right? Now, your soul, Lord, is the kingdom. Is what? You are exalted as head of a all. Let's look at the next thing. It says, Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and what? To strengthen you. Now, it says, now, our God, we give you thanks. What can you say in response to all these great things? Just give God thanks. And praise your glorious name. So God, number one, is the king of his kingdom. Number two, is the creator of the entire universe. Number three, he owns all things. He owns over all his all powerful, glorious, and magnificent. He is majestic. God should be praised. God should be worshipped. God should be thanked. That's who our God is. 